Welcome to Electron Line. Now let's talk about the moment of a couple, and a couple would mean two forces that are equal in magnitude but opposite in direction. And of course, any two forces that are equal in, uh, equal in magnitude and opposite in direction form a plane somewhere in space. So here we're going to calculate the moment of a couple in a general sense. So here we have the coordinate system. Here's the origin. And notice there's two points in space, two arbitrary points in space, A and B. Now let's say that there's a force acting in this direction and we've situated the force starting at A and let's call this force F and then here we have an op another force let's call it minus F and the only reason why we call it minus because it's an opposite direction of this force but again they're equal in magnitude just opposite in direction and they form a plane in space. Now we're going to calculate the moment caused by that. So what we're going to do is draw a position vector from the origin to point A and from the origin to point B. And so here we'll call this, oop, I want to be in the direction here, slightly off. So there's our position vector R sub A and here is our position vector R sub B. All right, and then the vector from the, begin, the start of the negative vector to the, start of the, uh, to the start of the positive vector, let's call this vector here R. And of course this is the vector that connects the two forces and we already know that the moment can be calculated by taking that position vector R, the vector from the start of one, the vector from the start of one force to the start of the other force and multiply it via the vector product with the force. And we know that that's going to be the moment. Now what we're going to do next is we're going to write R as being equal to R sub A minus R sub B. And that would be correct if you, for example, add the negative of R sub B to R sub A. The negative of R sub B, that would be this vector right here. So if you draw parallel to that. So, so this is, oh, I didn't draw the arrows, did I? So there's the vector R sub A. Here's the vector R sub B, and so the negative of vector R sub B would look like this. So that would be minus R sub B, and then if you add R sub A plus the negative R sub B, you get this vector right here. Oh, I need to make this vector a little bit longer, like so. And then you can see that this would therefore be the R vector, which is the same as this R vector right there. So you can see that R is indeed R sub A minus R sub B. If you then substitute that into our equation for the moment, we get the moment is equal to the quantity R sub A minus R sub B, the difference of the two vectors, multiplied via the vector product times F. And so we can then say that the moment is simply equal to R sub A cross F minus R sub B cross F. And so that would be another way of writing the moment of two vectors or two forces that are parallel to each other equal in magnitude and opposite in direction. And so that would be the moment. Now, where is the position of that moment? Well, since we drew this with respect to these two vectors, we can then draw the moment right over here relative to the origin. Let me use a different color for that. So here, let's see here. So this would be the moment caused by these two vectors. And now notice that it really doesn't matter where you draw the moment. In the previous video, we had drawn the moment somewhere along the line connecting the two vectors right here. But really, what we could do is we could draw the moment anywhere because all we care about the moment is the magnitude and the direction, of course, the sense of motion or rotation. You can see that this vector or this force pulling this way, this force pulling this way, if this was a physical bar, it would cause the bar to rotate like this, which would be a counterclockwise motion. So the moment here would have a sense of a counterclockwise motion associated with it. The length of this vector simply is a result of the magnitude of the moment, and that would depend upon the magnitude of R and the magnitude of F. The bigger the R and F are, the bigger the moment is. And again, using your right-hand rule, notice that if you can curl your fingers in the direction of F and F like this, you can see that this would cause things to rotate in that direction or if you take your fingers and you point in the direction of R and then in the direction of F, you can see how your thumb points upward as well. Notice that this vector, the moment vector, is perpendicular to the plane formed by the forces F and minus F as well. 
So that would be the general case of looking at it. You can see there, therefore, that the, the position of the moment, there's no such real thing as the position of the moment. This moment can be placed anywhere, so you can draw R sub A and R sub B in, from any point in space, really, and then you would always see that you get the same magnitude of moment because the relative position of R and the angle between R and F and R sub B and F and F minus would always change, would compensate for the starter position where you want to draw the moment. So the moment can be drawn anywhere you like. The only thing about the moment that's important is the direction, the magnitude, and the sense of rotation that the moment gives you. And that would be looking at the moment of a couple in a general sense.